given that you've done a lot of work on marketplaces and platforms, and, I, and recently I wrote your posts around unbundling the bundles. And, and so in your experience, in your opinion, how will marketplaces change in a, in a Web 3.0 world? And, and I'm aware that you're working with the Boson protocol. And how does something like that, something so strategic as that, play into that vision? Yeah, absolutely, Naveen. I think uh, there, there are some very fundamental changes when we think about mapping marketplaces into a Web 3.0 world. So the first thing that we need to understand is that in a Web 2 world, marketplaces used to bundle two things. They used to bundle infrastructure for market transactions, providing you the payments capability, the, uh, you know, the seller onboarding, listing, etc. And they also used to uh, manage the governance. So they used to bundle the infrastructure and the governance, the rules of the transaction. What happens in a Web3 world is that some of the rules of the transaction can be embedded into a protocol, while the most of the infrastructure is built by the ecosystem around the protocol. So the protocol manages the governance, but the infrastructure now is unbundled from the protocol, uh, unbundled from governance. What this means is there are two elements to this, right? When you unbundle the infrastructure from the governance, you no longer have the right to charge 30% kind of transaction fees because as a protocol, if you charge that level of transaction fee, nobody's going to build the infrastructure on top of your protocol. So the first thing that it leads us to is minimally extractive protocols. Protocols are naturally incentivized to extract less, pass it back to the ecosystem and incentivize the ecosystem to build out the infrastructure around the protocol for managing the market transactions. Now that leads to a second issue uh, or a second uh, aspect over here that because the ecosystem builds out the, tra the transaction components, the transaction infrastructure, there's a perfectly competitive market in building the infrastructure itself. So instead of one single marketplace managing everything, instead of a winner take all ecosystem, we will end up with what I call a winners share all ecosystem where multiple players would play out. You know, it's a bit like how Hollywood works. Hollywood does not have one single marketplace connecting actors and studios. There are many different agents that do that. So in a web three world, we'll have less of marketplaces and more of these agents working together. And when I think about what we're doing at Boson Protocol, it's, it's very similar. We see the shift towards the metaverse as an initial killer use case, an initial, uh, I would say, umbrella of killer use cases that will move commerce towards Web3. But eventually, we want to see how Web3 transactions can happen, not just in the metaverse, but metaverse to real world, real world to real world. And in order to do that, we need to have the, the, the incentives for market participants to build out all those marketplace components, all those infrastructural components around the protocol. So these are really the fundamental factors that, that drive value in Web3. What I want to call out as, as we close this is we're still at a stage in Web3 where a lot of token value is being driven by speculation. And we need to really be clear about when token value is driven by speculation, when it's driven by actual market infrastructure components being built. So that's really what will determine the longevity of some of these business models.